1 plus 1 equals 2. As far as the laws of mathematics refer to reality, they are not certain. As far as they are certain, they do not refer to reality. Albert Einstein Is there anyone who can't see that it is just this, by now, inveterate framework of numbers which has at last asphyxiated and ancestrally damned mankind? To what advantage and whose profit, by virtue of whom and what? And that is why we are today confronted with a humanité in such an advanced state of civilization. Antonin Arto Mathematics may be defined as the subject in which we never know what we are talking about, nor whether what we are saying is true. Bertrand Russell I have hardly ever known a mathematician who was capable of reasoning. Plato 1 plus 1 equals 2 This is the ultimate axiom. 1 plus 1 equals 2 This is logic's trampoline. This is the seed shit. This is pure reason. This is the cliché that separates the sheep from the goats, the shibboleth that divides the savages from the zombies. One plus one equals two. From mathematics comes economics. From economics, starvation, as well as all manner of other annoying, mystifying and lethal rubbish. Mathematics, like all professions, is a conspiracy against the ignorant. I will declare my interest. I was never able to understand it, and therefore never liked it. But let's have a good look over the edge of this germinative skip. One plus one equals two. Now, what exactly are you flirting with the idea of yawning at? Who, where, when, why and what is the terminal, ultimate one? What's the unit, the indivisible unit, that presumably has to exist before you can talk about it? Unless, of course, you're on Mandrax. Well, just take a box of matches, boy. It's one box of matches, isn't it? But, sir, there are a lot of matches inside. Very well, then. Take an atom and let's get on with it. But you can't take an atom, sir. There are protons and electrons, positrons and antiprotons, hadrons, rushons, muons and taons that go backwards and die before they were born, and quarks and charms that come in five flavours. Up, down, charmed, strange, and bottom, and neutrinos that can penetrate a lead wall fifty light years thick, as well as constantly oscillating and changing their identity inside an atom. And then there are all kinds of other invisible entities mesons and baryons, pions and gravitons, which are added to give whatever it is or isn't a little weight, but which from what no one has ever seen of them, are judged to be weightless. There are quarks and antiquarks, distinguished from each other by being painted in anti-colours. There are certain leptons who only reach fulfilment, who only count themselves real when they don't exist, or, if you prefer, have zero mass, and therefore, out of deference to them, shouldn't be counted. Besides which, the largest ingredient of these so-called particles is nothing, so they can't really be counted either. Some of them they've given up on, and they're just called simply, though surprisingly untechnically, strange ones. And there are others facetiously known as gluons, obviously conceived of in desperation, that are used to sellotape the whole lot together all of which fills the gaps in no one's real knowledge of what an atom 
really is sub-atomic quangos and will-o'-the-wisps, invented monthly by neurotic physicists to plug a hole in their neat formulae, but which give you no real clue as to what is the ultimate, tangible bit which we could call one. Beyond, of course, their saying, meretriciously, opportunistically, and prohibitively expensively, that it's hidden. Hidden behind a complex cloud which you are all far too stupid to penetrate. Look, boy, you're just being difficult. But, sir, I just want to get to the bottom of things. Look, it's not something you need to concern yourself with. Mathematics is an abstract science. What, like abstract painting? No, 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 not at all. Mathematics is a hard science. Yes, sir, I find it the hardest of all. But if it's hard, isn't it time it got really tough, I thought. Sir, in order for you to be able to say, one, and then out of some dubious, infatuated, self-indulgent greed at the discovery. One plus one. There has to be a ferro-concrete, petrified, unmalleable, incompressible, adamantine, unbreakable, gritty, sclerotic, tempered and obdurate, hard-boiled, intractable, steely and substantive, inelastic, osseous, and copper-bottomed one of something. Otherwise, otherwise, it's all bollocks. Would you mind leaving the class, and you may take your bloody thesaurus with you? In case others have had similarly naive preoccupations, and have attracted similar responses to their impertinent suspicions, and have perhaps in later life been falsely frustrated by their inability to calculate, or have ever been made to feel inferior through their righteous resistance to calibration. The panacea, the remedy, the emancipating excuse, if not the liberating truth, has arrived. Theorem 666 If there is something called one, it must be unique. If it's unique, then it must occupy an absolutely unique point in space and time. Thus, if anyone should be foolish enough to hypothetically posit another one, and, adding insult to injury, try and add them together, there would be fuck-all point. Since, by definition, the other one was already there in the first place, at the aforementioned unique point in space and time. Quod erat demonstrandum. Or, if you prefer, it can be said more briefly. If you can add one to one, then the first one wasn't one in the first place. Besides which, even if there was one classic one, adding another to it is clearly aesthetically decadent. A repetitive dilution, a cheap skate, huckstering trick. For when you say one plus one equals two, you are departing firmly and irrevocably from the world of reality, and the consequent surrealism, the stock exchange, the calculator boom, monetarism, to give a few sad examples, is unsatisfyingly tawdry. The only one that you can possibly take is the whole universe, if not the whole multiverse. And where would you take it? It wouldn't quite fit into the till at Tesco's, though it might tolerantly embrace it. But in fact, being a multiverse, there wouldn't be anywhere else you could take it. One plus one equals two. Science is unassailable hook line is nothing more than a bullying, pedagogic fib. Mathematics is merely mammon's vamping coming on. 
look after number one, boy. And the best way to look after number one is by doubling it. One plus one is a morganatic marriage. There can be no true heir, though there is plenty of fallout. Commerce is radioactive toe jam that sticks us all together and keeps us plodding in the three-legged race. But mathematics is a pure science, yeah? Forgive my coarseness, but mathematical mayhem has made me broke, along with two-thirds of the rest of the world. It's about as pure as a Sudanese dung beetle on the game. Mathematics comes from mathema in Greek, which means a lesson. And we have been productively browbeaten by this anathematic lesson since the beginning of time. Now, half the world's population are cashiers. The other half are training to be. And innumeracy is thought to be even more heretical than illiteracy. Sometimes I can still hear the maths master bleating through the sweaty fog of a recurrent nightmare in which I am also being force-fed numerological soup. One is a number which, when multiplied by any other number, that number remains unchanged. By the same token, zero is a number, which, if added to any number, that number remains unchanged. He'd invited me to see Fulham play on the Saturday following this disclosure, but I thought, if that's the closest you can get to it all, we won't reach the ground at Craven Cottage before Doomsday so I decided to go there alone. One plus one equals two. One times one equals one. Naught to the power of minus one equals infinity. Minus two times minus two times minus two equals minus eight. But minus two times minus two equals plus four. Because a minus number raised by an even power gives a positive. Oh, pull the other one. It's got bells on it, and more. That'll be £2.57p, sir. Ah, how did you work that out? Would you be so lucky as to address the question to an animist cashier of conscience? The delay should provide you with ample time to make a quick dash for the door with the goods. It is a great joy to know absolutely nothing. But how you know nothing, and who you learn it from, could possibly be important.